Well, you know, I used to struggle like you plebeians when it came to putting. That was until I found the world's most magnificent putter, the elite of the elite, the P2. <sighs> this plastic is too hard, man. It just like skips off the chains. Oh, this plastic's too soft. It just gets like manhandled by the chains. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I used to be inaccurate with my putts until I switched to KC Pro Aviars, and now I'm like 12 times more accurate. Some people even call me the goat, but have you tried out a Luna? I haven't lost a playoff since I switched to Lunas. I mean, outside of faulty tee pads. I am telling you, dude, that putter has like no glide whatsoever. It is like putting with a parachute. That thing just like glides way too much. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today, we wanna to talk about one of the most important discs in your bag, if not overall, the number one most important disc in your bag. Today, we wanna to focus on the disc that makes you regret everything about your round and also brings the highlight moment when you save that beautiful par that you thought was far and far away. We're talking all about putters and we're gonna lean into a little bit of an idea that lots of you have been looking for as an excuse and that is the fact that sometimes it might just be the disc's fault. Now, I don't believe that switching putters is always the answer, but sometimes in very rare cases, I do believe that switching putters could be the right answer for all of your putting woes. And yes, I'm very aware that most of you just ignored everything I just said and thought, Robbie has confirmed the idea. It's time for me to switch putter. <laughs> if you're only going to hear that, then yeah, I might as well equip you on how to do that correctly. So. Let's dive in. Now, before switching to Team Innova, I had fallen in love with the Emac Judge and specifically the Eco Plastic Emac Judge that came in the Trilogy Challenge in 2021. I was a beadless putter guy, and the micro bead of the Emac Judge actually helped introduce me to the power of what a bead can do for consistency in your release. People kept telling me how a beaded putter gave them a clean release, and I was always confused how when you put your finger on the outside of the disc like this, how that bead was supposed to create a clean release when there was literally more plastic for your finger to come around as the putt came off of your hand. But like any overly proud person or someone that most likely is wrong, I failed to play around with the idea of moving my finger from on top of the putter to underneath it and letting that bead actually slot into a certain notch in my finger, which would let me know that my finger was in the right spot, which actually led to more consistent releases on my putt every single time. But the problem is that I fell in love with a putter that I thought was going to become regularly available in the Emac Judge. And while that's true in some plastics, the plastic that I want to throw it in regularly for my putting putter, as well as try it out in a premium plastic for a throwing putter, turns out that that's not gonna be a possibility anytime soon for the dynamic lineup. If you've heard me say it once, you'll hear me say it a thousand times, while throwing a specific run of a disc is totally fine if you're willing to have backups, I firmly believe for a putting putter that that gets super dicey because your putting putter is guaranteed going to have some wear and tear as it is literally being used on almost every single hole to tap in and come in contact with the chains, which means over time, you're going to have to cycle that disc out and replace it, which is going to become expensive over time as you need to find that limited run. Thankfully, I have some amazing friends who have hooked me up with a ton of those eco plastic EMAC judges and have kept their eye out and used bins all over the country, trying to make sure that I know when there are more available or when they happen to run into some and my stock of them has gotten pretty large. So I'm certainly not worried about running out of Eco Emac judges anytime soon, but because they've only ever made one run of them, there is a literal limited number of those putters. Which brings me to today's video. While working my most recent shift over at Dynamic Disc Iron City, someone had traded in five daggers. Now the dagger you may be familiar with as it is the putter of choice for Ricky Wysocki, and I'm pretty confident he won both of his world titles using this putter. Obviously not this specific one, so all you haters in the comments just live your life, okay? We have a putting corner set up in that shop and I spent most of the shift when people weren't inside the store practicing with these daggers over and over again. And I was finding more and more success as I continued to use the disc during that shift. And so I thought, why not go through a trial period of testing out daggers and seeing how they work for my game? I'm not getting rid of my EMAC judges anytime soon and definitely know that I can go back to them, but there are a few rules and principles that I'm going to stick to when it comes to testing out a new putting putter. And of course, we can't talk about 
about putting without talking about today's video sponsor, Disc Dot. One of the biggest reasons we change our putters is to find more consistency in our game. And one of the easiest ways I found consistency in my game is by using Disc Dot during my putting practice. This easy to use tool gives me immediate feedback on my putting form. This information allows me to quickly fix and tweak my putting form so that while I'm on the practice green, I can make those micro adjustments so I can start crushing and obliterating my friends during our next round. But speaking of crushing and obliterating your friends, don't take my word for it, let's look at the facts. In 2022, Kristen Tatar did not have this Tour Series dot, and she also had no world titles. The Tour Series dot was made, Kristen would use it during her practice sessions and go on to obliterate the entire FBO field, claiming her first world title. So I'm just saying, if you wanna win a world title, it seems pretty obvious. Head over to dis.usa.com and use card RC Disc Golf at checkout to pick yourself up one of many of the pro players Tour Series dots, which are actually on sale from now till the end of the season or while supplies last. I promise you're not gonna regret it as you start finding success on the putting green when you realize it's as easy as focus, putt, and repeat. The first rule for me is making sure that the putter comes in a variety of plastic types. One of my biggest struggles with the KC Pro AVR when I was on Team Innova was that during the summer, fall, and spring, KC Pro plastic felt amazing in my hand. But in the colder months, that KC Pro plastic became super slick and very dangerous to putt with because in colder climates, if it came in contact with metal, it definitely had the opportunity to explode. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a KC Pro plastic disc die due to impact. When I switched back to the open bag, I knew I was gonna be rocking a Trilogy putter because Trilogy does such a good job releasing their molds in a variety of plastics. That means that the hand feel is going to be extremely similar while I can just simply switch out the plastic and not have to go to a different mold, which is gonna give me more consistency in my game year round. So when you're considering an option, if you live in an area that there are extreme swings in the weather, you may wanna make sure that you're looking at a putter that comes in a variety of plastic options so that you don't have to change molds overall simply because the weather's changed too. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider is hand feel. Not only how it feels resting in your hand while you're lining up your putt, but also the hand feel of does it come out clean and consistent while you're throwing your putting stroke. We've got this video up here that we made a while ago, but some of the big things to consider are the depth of the putter and also bead or beadless. If the putter's too deep, you're gonna have a hard time getting a firm grip on it to get that clean and consistent release. And if it's too shallow, your fingers are gonna be all cramped up on the disc, which isn't going to create that clean release either. For instance, on these Sense Plastic Daggers, one of the big things I noticed is that some of them had an extreme amount of flashing on them, while others were actually pretty smooth overall. And while flashing is something that can easily be fixed and isn't against the PDGA code of rules or whatever to actually adjust, it's something to notice that I'm going to have to, on some of the daggers that I acquire, scrape off the flashing with either a block of sandpaper or give it the nice tea pad treatment that you see right here. Now the final piece of advice when switching putters is probably the hardest one to lean into, and that is that you need to stick with it for enough time to decide whether the putter fits your game or you just find yourself in a bad putting slump or even an abnormally good streak of putting. For those of you who play in tournaments, you have seen your putting go from amazing one round and then simply a lunch break feels like you've lost all of your momentum in the afternoon round. The same thing can happen to each of us in our disc golf game and having one good day on the putting green doesn't necessarily mean that your putter is to blame for either the success or failure of that round. So here is my simple formula. If you find yourself playing on a consistent basis, meaning that you are playing at least three times a week and practice putting four times a day, then I believe your trial period for that putter should be about one month. This means when you're practicing putting and when you are out on the course, you are simply using that specific mold. And trust me, I understand if you've got a huge stack of putters, that means it's gonna be more walking for you in the interim until you decide whether this putter works for you or not. Now, if you find yourself not in that category and you are playing less than that, then I believe the trial period for your putter should be no less than two months. But, 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 but Robbie, that's like my, my whole season. I think to be a consistent player and to have your game as dialed as you need to be to make a huge change, such as switching what you're putting with, it would be extremely difficult to know whether you have a consistency issue or something's changed in your game versus the putter change actually being what was needed. If you want to try it out for less time, then I guess you could really 
say just play more with this trial putter. But like that's entirely up to you and also you don't have to take any of that advice and you could just try it for a week and then toss it because you're like, ah, this putter isn't for me. So will the dagger stick around? Honestly, I don't know. I'm less than a week into my trial period with them and I'm still getting used to what they can and can't do. But I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on their progress as we continue to work with them. So if you're one of those people who likes to switch putters every other week and yet you also wonder why you struggle with consistency in your putting game, you may have your answer right there in itself. But like most of the tips that I give in disc golf, I like to remind people that this game is all about having fun. So if a way for you to keep the fun in this game is switching around your putter every single time that you go out and play a new round, I'm not gonna be the random dude on the internet telling you to stop. But I am gonna be the random dude on the internet who cares about seeing you score the best you possibly can. My legs are already exhausted from all the extra walking that I'm gonna have to do from my seven daggers versus my 21 EMAC judges. But if I wanna see my game improve, I have to put in the time and effort the best and most efficient way I know how. So I hope this video was helpful and if you have a putter that you're thinking about trying let us know in the comments down below what putter you're thinking about looking at and if you're someone who has thrown that putter in the past or currently uses that for your putter of choice be sure to give them some feedback and let them know what tips and tricks you found to using that putter effectively overall i want to say thank you for watching and i hope you have an amazing rest of the day and not only that but an incredible week as well and i hope you can make it great for someone else too already looking forward to the next one because we have a fantastic video lined up for you next week with three amazing people but for now i'm gonna leave you with the birdie.